You see, he had a small joke against the Muslims about polygamy. You see, since Islam allows, Islam allows you to marry four. He didn't quote the verse correctly. He was saying Surah Nisa, verse 3, or something to the effect. The Quran says, marry women of your choice by twos and threes and fours. But if you cannot do justice between them, marry only one. The only religious book, I'm saying the only religious book on the face of the earth, which has this expression, marry only one, is the Quran. There is no other book on earth. And this is the solution to your problem. He has settled down in America. He has married a beautiful young lady, an American woman. Congratulations. But now, wait, wait, wait. The, the American statistics, they tell us, there are 7.8 million more women than men in America. That's almost 8 million more women in your country, sir, the land of your domicile. 8 million women who can't get husbands. If every woman, if every man in America got married, there'll still be 8 million women who can't get husbands. I'm asking, in this book of God that you are boasting about, what is the solution to your problem? Jimmy Swaggart. If you get the tape, the tape is available. Jimmy Swaggart. Anish Sharosh, the tape is available. You can get it before you go. They are eight pounds each. Jimmy Swaggart, if you see this debate, at the outset, he's also having a laugh at our expense. He says, you know, Mr. Didat, he says, you know, we had a chat in the waiting room, and Mr. Didat says that the Muslim can have four wives. Islam allows four wives. He just corrected me, said, up to four. I said, well, Mr. Didat, Christianity only allows us one, so I had to get the best on the first shot. <laughs> But you see, Christianity allows us only one. And I have to choose the best. <laughs> Get the tape. Get the tape. He said, I have to choose the best. And you know, the best was not good enough. <laughs> look, look. This, all these tele-evangelists, all, one by one, they're all falling. Reverend Mar, 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 Marvin Gorman, an evangelist, you know, tele-evangelist, he appears on television, tantalizing millions. He was caught with a prostitute. Jim Becker, Jim Becker, with Jessica Hans, another prostitute. Jimmy Swaggart, average of two trips a month to the prostitute for his satisfaction. I said, you laugh at us? You are a fool. I said, the laugh is on you. You Americans, you have a problem. You British, you have a problem. You French, you have a problem. You Germans, you have a problem. And to these, there are no solutions in your book. No solution. Islam gives an answer to your problem. Divorce. 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 Brother Shorosh was talking about divorce. You know how the Muslims. Look, when you mal practice, when you do something against your own teaching, you are culpable. No doubt the general Muslim community seems to have got that idea that when you want to divorce your wife, you just have to say talaq, talaq, talaq. 
but he's supposed to have known the Quran. There is a chapter in the Quran, the whole chapter is called Surah Talaq, meaning chapter divorce. You must have read it. Surah Talaq. Talaq means divorce. At the outset, Brother Sharosh, he said, he has been studying the Quran for two years now. Two years. Uh, sure. See what the Quran says, please, brother. And then point a finger at the Quran and say, look, this Quranic teaching is not right, it's not feasible, it's unreasonable. Talk about the Quran. Don't talk about the Muslims. As much as we have bad Muslims, you have bad Christians. You, uh, He also quoted a Quranic verse like Rafiddin, which means there is no compulsion in religion. Compulsion is worthless. At the point of the gun or the knife, you force somebody to say, read the Shahada, the Kalima, the creed of Islam, and the man is forced to read. What is it worth? Nothing. There is no compulsion in religion. But the insinuation is that the Muslims were doing compulsion. I said, look, my brother, Sharosh, you are a proof that the Muslims didn't use any compulsion for 1,400 years. For 1,400 years, you and your other Christians, whom you now say number 14 million, they lived in our midst. In, in Egypt, the Muslims have been the overlord of that country for 1,400 years. For a few years, the French came. For a few years, the British came. But overall, for 1,400 years, the Muslim has been ruling that land. And yet, and yet, today, you can boast there are 10 million Coptic Christians in Egypt. If there was compulsion of any kind, there would not have been a single Christian left in that country. The Muslims ruled Spain for 800 years. 800 years. We, because we failed to deliver the message, we were kicked out. We were kicked out. Shame on us. We didn't fulfill our obligations. But if they had used any type of force, even economic force, for 800 years, there would not have been a single Christian left in that country. We Muslims, we rule India for a thousand years. But after a thousand years of Muslim rule, eventually when partition takes place, the Muslim gets one quarter, the Hindu gets three quarter. Why? Because we didn't do the job. We didn't use any compulsion. And which Muslim army went to Indonesia? Which Muslim army went to Nigeria? Which Muslim army conquered the east coast of Africa? Which Muslim army? Today, the British, the Britisher and the American, he's coming towards Islam. I want to know what sword, what sword, what sword is the Muslim using? The sword of the intellect. George Bernard Shaw, he said, if any religion has a chance of conquering England, near Europe, within the next hundred years, so that religion is Islam. Shaw, Bernard Shaw had the foresight, he could see. But we Muslims, we have failed Islam. Wallah, we have failed. We have failed. We haven't made a start yet. We believe. We say we believe, but we have not made a start yet. This is our problem. The, the destiny is ours. Wallah, it is ours. Allah says, He has given you a deen, a way of life that is the master, super, overcome and supersede them all, bulldoze them all, whether it be Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Communism, Judaism, every ism. Sword, sword. I'm asking, what sword? 
Thomas Carlyle. Thomas, Thomas Carlyle. Thomas Carlyle in 1840. He delivered a series of lectures here in the UK. In England, Thomas Carlyle, one of the greatest things of the past century. Thomas Carlyle. And he says, the sword, the sword. He said, the sword indeed. But where will you get your sword? He said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. In one man's head alone, there it dwells as yet. That he take a sword and try to propagate with that will do little for him. He said, first, you must get your sword. And how do you get your sword? Through the intellect, through reasoning. Allah says, invite all to the ways of thy Lord with wisdom. The sword of the intellect of wisdom. And with beautiful preaching. And reason with them in the ways that are best and most gracious. This is the sword.